Hi, this is Sabin Bharti and we are here at the Spring One Platform Conference in DC and today we have with us Elizabeth from Pivotal. Uh, so first of all, tell us what do you do at Pivotal? I'm a member of the R&D leadership team. I'm responsible for Gemfire, Pivotal, Cloud Cache, and I'm getting involved in PKS. Oh, R&D, that means a lot of research and uh, a lot of playing with the buzzwords <laughs> and new tech. <laughs> Uh, research development, execution, delivery of value, yes. We were talking about my whole Agile setup. Uh, yes. And we hear this word a lot, right? Agile development, uh, nimble. What does, it, what does it really mean? Ah, so there are many, many def definitions. I go back to the Agile Manifesto, the original document that was written in 2001 that, that describes like um, people over processes and tools. Um, and there's, there's a page behind that that a lot of people haven't read, which is the 12 principles of Agile. And if you distill it down, it boils down to a continuous delivery of value at a sustainable pace while adapting to the changing needs of the organization. So to me, that's what Agile is. No matter how you actually build software, what practices you use, what process you follow, if you're doing Scrum or Safe or, or at Pivotal, we practice extreme programming. Um, as long as you can deliver a continuous stream of value at a sustainable pace while adapting to the changing needs of the, the business, then you're Agile. Is it more about technology or is it also about people? Or is it about both? It's all of the above. Mm -hmm. Um, just because you buy a tool that's got an Agile label slapped on it does not going to make your organization Agile. So it's the, uh, in order to deliver that continuous stream of value, you probably do need tooling. Like at Pivotal, we've got PAS. Uh, so as a developer, you can CF push your application and it, it eliminates all that yak shaving that gets in the way of delivery of value. So having tooling like that is super helpful, but that by itself doesn't make the organization agile. Being able to uh, develop in a way that delivers a, a, a little increment of value, so delivering incrementally, um, that requires a, a mindset shift for a lot of organizations. In some organizations, they're accustomed to delivering like layers of the architecture, and we see the layer cake building up from the bottom all the way to the top. And that means that customers can't actually recognize the value until the entire cake is done. And that's not very agile because it means that you're not going to get those results for months and mm. in some organizations even years. And in the meantime, there's all this speculation that's built up that it's going to actually solve the business problem, but the world has changed before it gets delivered. So that mindset of delivering incrementally, a willingness to be radically collaborative, to eliminate the handovers, eliminate the ticket-based systems that result in long wait times, um, all of these things are, are part of becoming agile. And that does mean that it's not just tooling, it's also culture, but it's also not just culture, because if you don't have the tooling to support your, your uh, flow, then you're going to run into serious challenges. How does it affect security? Because uh, if you go to the old mindset, people set things up and they're like, don't touch it for years or years or years. How, because now suddenly you have a totally different mindset. Mm -hmm. Well, and with security is such an interesting example, because if you don't touch it for years and years and years, and in the meantime, there are CVEs in your dependencies, mm -hmm. and you don't have the ability to just go patch it. And Heartbleed taught us that, right? We look at what happened in the industry as a result of Heartbleed and all of these major CVEs, like zero day vulnerabilities. If you're not agile, you're not going to be able to respond when the CVE is found in one of your dependencies. So at Pivotal, we talk about the three R's, repair, repave, um, and rotate, uh, so rotating your keys. Um, and uh, one of the things that, that I think an agile platform and tooling will give you is that ability to repave your entire infrastructure and build it back up. And then you, you can't have those long uh, lasting uh, 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 latent attacks sitting there waiting for months. And they've been sitting there in the system. They broke in months ago and they haven't done anything. Um, if you're repaving your infrastructure on a, a weekly basis, that can't happen. So I, I actually think that security and agility can go hand in hand. But, but does it? Because sometimes security people, things are they also get wary of things changing also too fast. Well, and see, this is the culture piece, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's not just security, because security or various forms of compliance or, uh, uh, for that matter, even project managers who are accustomed to being able to, to like plan out an entire waterfall. 
all of them are discovering that the world is changing. And security is a particularly interesting example because if, if it can be a tremendous irony if the security people are actually resulting in the environment being less secure. Mm -hmm. Tremendous irony. And so uh, I, I look at, at um, I, it, the best security people I, I know, and we have Justin Smith at, at Pivotal, um, and, and we have our own internal CISO, um, and their attitude is much more like, look, I wanna automate the snot out of things. And we have to be very adaptable and flexible because the attacks are changing constantly. And so I think that when it comes to security professionals, that's the mindset that they need to adopt. And, and if they're trying to, to prevent security incidents through super strict control and, and con super strict control of change, yeah, the hackers have changed faster <laughs> than they're changing. Because, you know, if you look at and most of those effects, including the patch was already there for years. Exactly. They, 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 and most of the cases, you know, the, most of the time it's open source software, which was patched, you know, even years ago, yeah. but you never implemented it. You never patched your systems. Yeah. Well, and open source makes this, this all super interesting yeah. because it means that once the CVE is published, now there's a new vector for any hacker that is looking for how to break in systems there's now this published CVE and they can go kind of start poking, oh, what, mm -hmm. what version of struts are you mm -hmm. running? Or you know, what version of these dependencies? And what are the known vulnerabilities that they might be able to exploit? Yeah, so you have to, you, know, you, you cannot just sit back. and no. right. Beyond uh, agility, what are the other core areas you know, that you are interested in or they're like off your interest? Well, and certainly data is a large part of, of what I do. We, we have uh, I'm responsible for Gemfire. It's an in-memory data grid. Mm -hmm. uh, it's um, a high throughput, super low latency, uh, in-memory data grid, uh, and Pivotal Cloud Cache, which is powered by Gemfire. So I'm responsible for those products at, at Pivotal. These things are so in Find very well. Big, you look at big data, then you jump into machine learning, then you go into AI. If I'm not wrong, sure, no, and you're then, right. And all yeah. of that, you know, it's tight. Uh, when you look at IoT, everything comes into place, and then you cannot have any of that without cloud. And then you talk about cloud, then you talk about whether you're talking uh, na cloud native tech, uh, applications or you're talking hybrid cloud, or you're right. so so. It, you know, you can just keep jumping, hopping from one thing to other. So uh, so, so so for for pivotal, uh, big data is just a workload or it also part of the stack itself? It's part of our DNA. Mm -hmm. And so not uh, not necessarily every every product that we have that touches data is about big data, but mm -hmm. specifically when we look at Greenplum and Gemfire, both of them come from that big data world. G uh, Greenplum is our shared nothing architecture data warehouse that was originally based on Postgres. Um, and you can scale to petabytes of data uh, with Greenplum. So you're absolutely right. You go massive amounts of data, and IoT is a great example of why there is so much more data today, mm -hmm. because every single device is generating data. Every single consumer action is generating data. Social media is generating data. So you've got all of this massive amounts of data, and with massive amounts of data, machine learning becomes possible. And so we, we do live in this amazing world, and big data is part of Pivotal's DNA. When I look at Pivotal, I look at a large family of Dell, VMware, EMC, you know, you're, you're a big, you know, big family, you know, like, yep. like an Indian family, you know, there's so <laughs> there are too many people in there. So, so how, how do you work together with, you know, with, other, you know, all your other family members? Oh, we, we partner constantly. So mm -hmm. if we just look at it through the lens of, of I, I live at Pivotal, um, we have partnered with Dell for Green Plum Building Blocks, otherwise known as GBD. Uh, and this is our answer. Instead of having an appliance, we had an appliance with Dell in the past, but we partner with Dell now on a, 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 a bill of materials for a, 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 um, a stack that has been uh, optimized for Green Plum specifically. And so now we can show up hand in hand at a customer and say, we've worked together to make sure that the hardware is fully optimized, but without having it so tightly coupled in an appliance, and frankly, not that many customers really want bespoke appliances anymore. Um, we have partnered with them on the Pivotal Ready architecture for Cloud Foundry as well, and it's the same thing. that that 
tech stack, the, the hardware stack, has been optimized for Cloud Foundry. Um, then when we look at our partnership with VMware, we're working together on PKS. And um, so we, we are, are, when I say working together, teams literally have Pivotal engineers and VMware engineers pairing together, working together incredibly well to, to produce PKS. So you're right, it's, it's a big happy family and we all are working together really well. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, uh, going back to when you're talking about that, you know, companies, you know, have to become agile, you know, um, another, uh, it's not a buzzword, but this CI CD pipeline when we look yes. at it. Um, how important is that, you know, uh, when people embark on their cloud native journey? Um, well, so let's go back to why CI/CD is so absolutely critical. If the organization wants to be agile, and frankly, they want to be agile, even if they're not saying that, even if agile has become a bad word because they think agile didn't work for us, the fact is in, in so many things are changing so fast, any organization that is struggling to deliver frequently and deploy to production frequently or deliver a product frequently, they're, they're not going to be able to keep up with their competition. The world is just changing so incredibly quickly. So CI, CD, this is an essential part of how you deliver quickly. If you do the same software development process that you were doing in 1998 and just try to do it faster, it doesn't work. People will burn out. It, it, it's simply not feasible to deliver frequently. So CI, continuously integrating the changes that developers are making in a fully automated way, such that when I'm, I'm writing code, you've checked something in, I'm regularly updating, doing a git pull or you know, whatever source control system we're using, so that I'm constantly testing my stuff as I'm writing it, in a way that includes the changes you already made. That's continuous integration, true continuous integration. Um, I, uh, if we're not doing that, then we're gonna have massive merge conflicts, or even if the, there aren't merge conflicts, we have no idea what the behavior of the system is that's living in the source control repository, right? So this is why continuous integration, it's continuously, the code is being integrated and tested all together. And then continuous delivery, that means that at each moment in time, we're working on something that is potentially shippable. It's an increment of value. And that's that's how you achieve that the definition of agility that I just described. So to me, it's not so much about like, having CI CD tooling, although that is absolutely essential, that's necessary, but not sufficient. It's also that mindset that says that I'm not trying to, as a developer, I'm not developing in that silo, and you're developing in your silo, and at some point later down the line, we're going to make somebody else go merge these things together and see if they behave together. It's a mindset shift as well. So Pivotal can offer tools and technologies. Sure. But but what can you do about culture, or do you do anything about culture as well? Oh, we absolutely do. In fact, the, the Pivotal uh, culture, uh, Pivotal is a spin out from EMC and VMware, but the culture itself came from Pivotal Labs, and it was named for Pivotal Labs very intentionally. So when we look at our labs practice, we're not a, a consulting company, we're a product company. However, we do have our Pivotal Labs practice, uh, and uh, it, 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 this is a group of folks where we build software with our customers, teaching them all of the extreme programming uh, practices, paired, uh, pairing, test-driven development, continuous integration. And so it really becomes an enablement um, practice. It's, it's not just about delivering software, it's about delivering software with our customers, using all of the practices so that they can start to absorb that and bring it back into their culture. And since we have kind of moved out of technology and gone to culture and people, so let's, let's just talk about people and culture for a while. So uh, when, when you're not doing all this R&D work on Mars, what do you do in your free time? <laughs> Uh, I hang out with my family and play with my dog and I garden. I'm actually really boring. What kind of gardening do you do? Um, mostly trying not to kill the You're garden. You're not talking about the garden, the, the open source project garden. No, no. not the open source. <laughs> because it's very, every time I talk to somebody at people, they always switch the topic back to some product. So, no. our project. No, no. Um, we, uh, we have a house that is 100 years old, mm -hmm. and the previous owners put in a beautiful garden, and mm -hmm. I have a brown thumb. 
Mm-hmm. And I vowed I would learn how to garden so that I didn't kill the garden. And so I'm, I'm practicing learning how not to kill plants. Uh, how much do you travel for work? Um, not as much as I used to. So, so when, you, when you're out traveling, who takes care of your garden? My husband will, will reluctantly water the garden. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just set up some big data, you know, some some Raspberry Pis, you know, so they can water it? Because I think you can trust machines more than your husband, for sure. Um, when I have time, which uh-huh. I have not had time, what I would actually love to do is set up um, my own little mesh of IoT things uh, with sensors to sense the light levels, so that I can find the optimal places to plant things. Um, and I will probably do that before I do the AI-driven watering um, <laughs> uh, system. That's per- I, 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 I mean, Halloween is coming and I set up a lot of big decoration using all these open source projects and IoT devices and Raspberry Pis. So yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I, where I live, you know, you cannot do much gardening. So I just have some bamboo plants in, indoor and I'm, I'm not an outdoor person. So, but yeah. I, I, so yeah, hopefully by next uh, interview, maybe we'll, we'll get an update where we'll get, you know, AI powered and <laughs> IoT powered garden. <laughs> there we go. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us today and we'll see you again in the next conference, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. Same here.